Hello and welcome to a quick and simple run through of the names, locations and functions of the major bones. If you benefit from this video make sure to subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Let's begin. The cranium, commonly known as the skull, is composed of several flat plate-like bones that fuse together at around the age of two in humans. The joints between these bones are fixed or fibrous, meaning no movement is possible between them. Due to their large surface area, the bones of the cranium are primarily there to protect the brain. The mandible is the largest bone in the human skull and the one bone that can move freely. It holds the lower teeth in place, assists in mastication or chewing, and forms the lower jawline. The base of the cranium connects to the spine or vertebral column, which is comprised of 33 individual vertebrae. The vertebrae are irregular bones that house the delicate spinal cord and enable a small range of movement thanks to the tough yet flexible discs of cartilage that sit between them. The spine is divided into cervical, thoracic and lumbar portions and includes the sacrum and coccyx. The ribs are flat bones that protect the lungs and heart that sit within the thoracic cavity or chest. They also play a key role in the process of breathing, otherwise known as pulmonary ventilation, as the rib cage is capable of expanding and contracting thanks to the internal and external intercostal muscles located between the ribs. The sternum, or breastbone, is a flat bone that assists in protecting the organs in the chest, but is also connected to the ribs by cartilage, forming the slightly movable joints that allow the ribcage to rise and fall. The clavicle, or collarbone, is a long bone that connects the sternum to the shoulder joint. Here it articulates with the scapula, otherwise known as the shoulder blade, which is a broad, flat bone that provides the surface area necessary for muscles to attach, which both stabilise and produce a wide range of movements at the shoulder. The humerus, which can easily be remembered as the funny bone, is classified as a long bone and its main role is to provide movement. The head of the humerus, or epiphysis, fits into the shoulder socket formed by the clavicle and scapula. At the elbow joint, the humerus joins with the radius and ulna bones, and in the anatomical position, where the palms are facing forwards, the radius sits in line with the thumb. Their relative position is not fixed, however, as the radio-ulna joint allows us to pronate and supinate the forearm. The human hand has 27 bones. The carpals, of which there are 8, are short bones that provide both stability and a small range of movement in multiple directions. The palm of the hand is occupied by 5 metacarpal bones, which connect the carpals to the 14 phalanges or finger bones. The metacarpals and phalanges are classified as long bones, not because of their absolute length, but because they're longer than they are wide. The pelvis is a broad, irregularly shaped flat bone that has roles in supporting the weight of the upper body, producing red blood cells due to its high red bone marrow content, and providing the surface area necessary for muscle attachments. The quadriceps, gluteals, hamstrings and hip flexors all connect to the pelvis, enabling movement in the lower body. The pelvis connects to the femur, the longest bone in the body, via a ball and socket joint at the hip. The femur provides a large range of movement due to the distance between the epiphyses or ends of the bone. The tibia or shin bone is the largest of the two long bones in the lower leg and it articulates with the femur and patella to form the knee. The patella is a flat sesamoid bone that sits within the quadriceps tendon and helps to both stabilise the knee joint and protect its internal structures. The fibula is much smaller and thinner than the tibia. It's located just behind the tibial head at the knee joint and then runs down the lateral aspect or outside of the leg until it reaches the ankle. Here it articulates with the talus, a small bone that sits between the tibia and fibula and the calcaneus or heel bone beneath. Moving down the foot there are many similarities with the hand. The top part consists of the short tarsal bones, which provide a small range of movement and support the weight of the body. The tarsals connect to the longer metatarsals in the middle, which in turn connect to the 14 phalanges or toe bones. So there we have it, a brief rundown of the names, locations and functions of the major bones. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments section. And if you're a GCSE PE student or teacher, you can find links in the description to the complete exam revision course on Udemy 
and my resource store which contains everything you need to teach the entire Cambridge syllabus from scratch, regardless of experience. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.